Hello everybody. Today we'll use Swift Package Manager to create a Swift package, import it in a project and use it to first safely access the items in an array. Even if we go out of index, we will just return an, an optional. So we'll be returning nil and then we can address the nil instance with a default value without actually crashing with the index out of bounds. Also, we will use Swift Package to import other dependencies, in this case, Lottie, where we will be displaying a loading animation that loops. Additionally, we will see how we can move from an open source to not showing the source code by just importing everything through an XE framework. Okay, this is the project that we're going to begin with. It's a new project, and for now, it's just a simple application. It has just a hello world uh, has messages here have the number of message, so it has an index, and we have a stepper that just goes through a list of messages. And our first function that we want to add is something that will allow us to safely get whatever index from an array. Even if it's out of bounds, then it will return nil instead of what will happen here, which is once we go beyond the index, we have an index out of bounds and it crashes. So let's begin by creating that package. We're going to be working on this environment. So let's create here behind our project. We're currently here in the Swift package sample. Let's create a package. So we'll go to file new and create a package. Okay. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this an iOS exclusive. So for that, we edit the package that Swift file. Notice that we do have autocomplete, which is very handy. Here we can see that we are selecting the correct thing. And here let's let's make it iOS 16. And for uh, the comma. And for now we shouldn't have anything else. We can build here for devices. Let's see. Perfect. Okay. Everything is, works. Now here we have in our sources some package. And for now we have nothing here. So let's create our array plus additions and here is where we're going to introduce our convenience method for dictionary for an array sorry so we need foundation we're going to create an extension for array we're going to have a public subscript save we're going to call it we're going to have an index and it's going to return an element from the array optional Here we're gonna verify that index is greater than or equal to zero and that it's less than self that count. That way we will never go out of bounds. If it's not this, then we will return now. If it is, then we'll just return the index. Instead of making this public, let's make the extension of array public. And that's pretty much for our package. Right now we don't have to add anything else here. We specify the platform. That's pretty much it. We have to close it because now in our sample project, we're going to reference that package. We could post this to our repo and get it from there, adding the URL, the GitHub URL here, but instead we can conveniently add local and select the package we just created, which is this one. Added, we specify to what target, in this case, we will just have one target to add it to. And we now have this. Now in our content view, we can import it. And here, where we want to check our messages, we can use save. Now this will return an optional string. So let's add a default message here. And let's try, let's go to the third one. Okay, this is the last one. And then please select the valid index. So that's how easily we can create a Swift package. This was just using an extension from array. So no dependency. Now let's add a third party dependency. We will do it through Lottie. So we're going to be adding Lottie for those of you that are not familiar with it. This is how we you can present a very elaborate animation from a JSON file. This is the GitHub, it's by Airbnb. And we're gonna install Lottie to our package and present a free animation. The link will be here. 
which is just this loading animation for a button, I think, or loading. So first thing, let's add the loading animation to our Swift Package Sample app and check that it works. So we have the animation here is this JSON. Let's add it to the project. And all that we need now is the loading view. So let's first add the Swift package for Lori. You can check that it's very easy. In the Lori, we even have the documentation and it gives us the URL that we can to use to add the package. Let's go here and here where it says search or enter the package URL, that's where we'll copy paste this. We get the Lori SMP, yes, that's the one we want, and it's 4.4. Same, we add it to the package. Now that we imported the Lori package, we have to import Lottie here, and for now, we will add the Lottie view here. So for our Swift UI, we have this, the Lottie view. And it comes with an initializer for an animation. And we will just add a playback mode, which is just infinitely, it plays from progress zero to one, so from zero percent to 100% completion. And the loop mode is just, oh yeah, it's looping infinitely. And there we have our animation. Now this is fine. We're using two packages, all works. Now let's go more advanced into how we can create our package with third party dependencies. So all of this Lodi, this Lodi view, we're gonna wrap it in our own view inside of the Tom package. So it's more convenient to use as our package to use Lodi animations. That we will remove Lodi from our project, remove this import, and this Lottie view, we're gonna use it inside of the project. Okay, now, since we're using a local package, Xcode doesn't work well if you open the package and the project at the same time that's using the local package, so we need to close this window. Okay, we're back. We had to quit Xcode, it wasn't loading properly the package. But now to our Tom package, we need to add a dependency. How do we do that? Well, here in products, between products and targets, we can add dependencies. Again, autocomplete is our friend here. And we can add from a package with, with a package and we're gonna have it with an X. We use the URL, yeah. So here we use the same URL that we had here. Actually, here we have the entire thing. Once we save and it finished resolving, notice that now in our package dependencies, we have Lottie. Now let's create a wrapper view. not ready you will see why although we can load this will fail in our project let's start with name first and we have our animation here And let's see what this warning is. Here, Lori SMP is not using another target. Why? Because we haven't specified that our Tom package is using Lori. So here in our target, we add the dependency. It's a product We're using Lori from Lori SMP, SPM. And the warning went away, no more errors. And in our Swift UI view, which I hate how Swift package names things by default, be careful with that. We can add this and let's try building. Okay, it works. This will not work, but let's just move it into the project and see what happens. So here we're import the package dependencies. The Swift package manager should resource loaded. There it goes. Notice that we do not have 
Lot is specified in our packages, it's just a strong package, but because it has other dependencies, Swift Package Manager resolves that and also imports Lottie. One thing that I forgot was to make Lottie wrapper public. Luckily, because we have this locally, it's easy to edit. And we can do it from here. And here we will have our Lottie wrapper view and we just initialize it. Let's try running and see what happens. Okay, notice there's no Lottie animation. Why is that? Because we're not referencing this resource. This animation, although we're importing the package with the array and the Lottie wrapper view, this animation is not getting loaded with the package, but we can fix that. Let's go back to our package. Instead of name, okay, from file with the file path, we need a string. Now for that, we're gonna make our view conditional. So if we can get the file path address, we'll present our Lottie view. If not, we'll present the view that we couldn't load the Lottie asset. Now, how are we going to get the file path with bundle? Now, keep in mind, we cannot use bundle.main because that will not be the bundle of the package if we're using to search animation. But for now, let's just add this so we can get our project building. And let's go to Apple's documentation. Here in Apple's documentation, you will see that it tells us that we can use bundle.module and we can get the URL for the resource. So let's try doing that. We will, instead of using main, we will use module. Oh, and we don't have nothing. Now, why is that? That's because of how we have built the package. So if we do include resources, this module bundle will be available. So let's add a folder And inside that folder, inside the package, let's add the animation. Now this will still not work. Skip it with main, because we haven't made it explicitly in the package that, hey, we're using this animation. For that, we also have here in the dependency, we have other stuff, which is resources. Sorry about that, we added that in the wrong order. So here, below dependencies, we can add the resources. And we can tell it that we have in resources slash animation. We're telling it, hey, process this file as well. So here's the path for the resource. Now in our Lottie wrapper view, let's see if that I think I used the wrong word no yeah it wasn't processed it's copy and now we do have now with copy because i'm referencing now a resource now we do have the module and we have a path for a reason which is animation now let's try building in our project which again is referencing this package so it should get updated and see what happens and now we do have our animation without the need of including both the animation file in the project or the Lottie dependency, which is reference our local package and that works. Now, if you're just using packages like this, where you don't mind all of the code being public, um, that'll be it for the video. However, there will be some special situations where you want your code to be hidden. For example, here with Lottie, there's no issue, right? They, they have the entire open source thing. We can see all of their code sources, but maybe because you work on a company, uh, you don't want the code to be public. You just want other maybe partners or maybe if you're offering a product, you just want other users to use the product, but without having access to all of their source code. Sweet Package Manager does offer an option for that, which is you can offer your XE framework. So let's build that other flavor of a package.
Now, for this, we have to build a framework. So let's say, for example, you're already supporting CocoaPods and uh, Carthage. For that, you will have to have a framework project. We have that already created. Here in build package, we have already a framework. Let me open the project. And here we have pretty much the same thing in the um, package. So we have a load view wrapper that loads the animation. Here this framework also has the animation JSON and we have the extension for our array. Now, how do we generate the framework? Again, let's go to Apple documentation. To generate a framework, we have to run a command to archive the project. We archive it for iOS and iOS simulator. And then from those two archives, we create a framework with this command. All of this is already being done here in this script. Let me open it here in this script. So what we're doing is we're creating the current direction directory address with pwp pwd that's a command with terminal and let me add line breaks here this will break the script but just so you can see so what we're doing is we're archiving two things in the project so we're archiving the scheme for the framework but we're doing it with different destinations one is generic platform for ios and the other one is generic platform for ios simulator what this enables is that we can build our framework in an iOS emulator and in a real iOS device. Normally you will name this to debug and then to distribute to your users through the app store. And then in the archive path, you just select a different name for the archive. So this is Tom package iOS and this is iOS theme. After this command where you have generated both of these uh, archives, you create the framework pointing to these two archives. So you select the framework option and inside you just select the framework again for each of the products. So here you have iOS sim address and the iOS address. Now, in a terminal window, we just place ourselves inside of the built-in package. And here we have the XC framework script. All we have to do is source XC framework and this will run and generate the XC framework after some time. So we're done, let's open it. We have here our XC framework, just by order we archive two things here the two archives are here in an archive folder but this is the this framework this is the one that we care about and the other thing i forgot to mention is we cannot include we cannot use swift packages here to include Lottie. you will notice that there are no packages here why because we cannot generate an exit framework with other dependencies inside apple actually guards against that and you may have trouble with that so what we can do is we get the Lottie exit framework this is also available in Lotus in the Lotus repo. If you go to the releases, for example, for 4.4, yes, we have all of the release notes here, but we also have the assets. Here we have the XC framework that you can download and use. The important thing is when you're building your framework, you just select do not embed. And let's see how it will work with our uh, Swift packages project. So now here, I will remove the Tom package with local packages. This sometimes stays, just make sure you remove this. And we will add the exit framework. So we go to our build package. This is the framework that we just generated with the script and this was the load exe framework that I was referencing. In this case we do want to embed and sign it. And if I build this will fail because this build on package framework is expecting load. I believe this will also fail because Tom package should have a different name. Yeah build. Let's build and see the error. Here, no such model logic. How do we fix that? Well, now it's up to the one using the exit framework to also import the package. So now we, because it was not embedded, we also need to import Lottie. We're gonna do that through the Swift package manager. We could also have added Lottie just like an exit framework, like our project did. Let's try building again.
oh yeah difference of name was loading view wrapper and there we have it now it wasn't ideal that we had to me the user of the package this project had to manually import lottie it would be better if the pack if we could do all of this through a package so first of all not importing the binary and just using everything through swift package so we can let's once again remove lottie and enhance our package and let's open the directory so what we're gonna do is this exe framework that we were using gonna go to our tom package and include it there and here it is and our package we're already specifying that we have a dependency and we're already telling it to use it here we no longer need the resources and we actually do not need the all of this we actually don't need a single resource we are going to need a swift file though just an empty file but we do need something in the source why well because this is going to be just the reference this tom package is going to be kind of the bridge that we're going to use to pass the other dependencies lottie in this case we do not need the resources and we're gonna have now a new target And we are missing our other target. So in this case, we're not adding a target, but we're adding a binary target. And the path will be built from package to exit framework, I think. I don't remember if we have to add this line. Oh, yep, yeah, we do need. And um, the error went away quit again and go to our swift package sample and once again locally add our swift our tone package and notice the difference here we have the build tone package this is our exe framework and our tone package this is just the bridge that's being used to carry the other dependencies which in this case here we have it include lottie and now we get the benefit that whoever is using us does not get to see the source code in case we wanted to protect something it's just all in an exit framework that well they cannot see the source code but they can use the public interface which is what we want here we i believe we have a change for the name again of the view wrapper Oh, and we have multiple frameworks because I believe I forgot to remove the exe framework dependency. Yeah. Okay, the errors went away. We're using yeah, the same name. Let's try building again. And there we have it. This is the other way where you can import Swiss packages using exe frameworks. And that was all for today. You could see how easily we can use Swift package. It's not that different from CocoaPods and Cartage, but in this case, we have support from Xcode, which makes it a lot easier to create a package configuration with autocomplete. It's very convenient. We can easily access other dependencies and see it all from the Xcode console instead of having to run other commands and running into other problems that come from using CocoaPods or Cartage. We also saw the way where we can create an XT framework and distributed to Swift package so we could hide our source code. In the next video we will look at a more advanced case where XE framework runs into a problem when you have nested dependencies and you can not do an easy implementation such as the Lottie not bundling Lottie with the XE framework.